Hello there. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through how to add automatic signal control to your layout using an Arduino. Um, previously, I did this using a video done by Everard Junction. Um, it was video number 19 in his series, an absolutely superb series of videos. Um, that was amazingly, he uploaded that seven years ago. Um, and I did my layout light signaling probably about three or four years ago. Um, it worked fine. It, it was it was quite a complicated way to do it. And in the meantime, some of my signals have stopped working for some reason, probably more likely down to the fact my soldering wasn't particularly good. So I thought about possibly updating whatever our junction has done um, with a not so complicated way of using an Arduino, which basically meant you don't have to construct the circuit board for it. Um, and what, what it does is it's quite straightforward, really. There is, in my version, which follows the Everard Junction version, there's a light emitting diode in the track and a detector. And when the train passes that detector, that changes the signal. So here's my train, passes the signal, and then the signal goes through a sequence from red back to green. All the signals on my layout are three aspect and it's purely done by a timing method that red goes to amber and then amber goes back to green with the proviso that should an amber be passed it will go back to red and follow the sequence again so it goes to red and then on amber Cross it again, it goes back to red again. So, so that's that's the objective of this video. It's going to be quite complicated, and I'll probably break it down into sections because there are other considerations about whether you're going to use three or four aspect signals, um, and also there's the impact of possibly running more than one signal from one Arduino, which obviously makes sense um, because that will keep the cost down. So this is how my layout operates. Um, I, I will try to mimic this with the Arduino, but add some additional functionality to it as well. So let's look at what we need for this project. Um, this is an Arduino, if you haven't seen one before. This one is the Arduino Uno, which is the, the, probably the most popular one for, for sort of these sorts of projects. It's got quite a bit of flexibility in it, and it's more or less ready to go. Uh, in fact, when you buy one, normally about fiver, I guess, five quid, um, they normally come with a roll, roll of these as well, uh, and they will go into the uh, the terminal blocks on here, and you can just break off as many as you need, and that's useful for soldering our wires onto that, so we can sort of plug it straight into the board, as it were. Um, if you look along here, probably you can't see it because of the light, unfortunately, Eunice has knocked out all the power. There's a row of numbers on here, and these tell us what the, what number the pin are, which we'll, we'll make reference to later. So that's the Uno. Uh, not surprisingly, they come in different flavours, as you would imagine. This one here is what's called an Arduino Nano. It's a much smaller size. It's got more or less the same number of pins. Um, I'm not sure about the computing power of this one. The only concern I would have using this one instead of this one is that maybe with more signals attached to it and more lights it may not be able to ha handle the, the power but we'll give that a try because obviously that's a cheaper option than the uno if we only need it to do one job in its entire life this should be absolutely fine so there's the uno um, in terms of making connections into the into the board what i'm tending to use at the moment and what i'll use for this demonstration are, are these things you can buy unos with them as well they come sort of pre pre-supplied as it were and they're just they're just simple wires with connectors on the end um, and you can just plug them straight into the board to make a connection so it's very easy to use these um, so there's the boards the other thing we're going to need is a, some form of detection um, these ones are really good because they're just so easy to use um, you normally see them on the likes of ebay and they're described as uh, movement detectors and you see they've got three pins on the on the side there, which will connect straight into the Uno. You've got uh, an LED emitter and an LED receiver. So very simple to use. We'll, we'll deal with those later on. Um, you will need some form of signals, obviously. Um, these are the ones on my layout I showed you earlier, and I really like these. I just think they're superb. 
Um, note that it says 12 volt DC only, and we need to talk about that in a moment in terms of what power the, uh, the UNO provides. Um, only three phase this one, so for the purposes of, of our demonstration, I've just done some simple mock-ups, um, and here's one which is a four aspect. Um, I mentioned about power. Um, now, the UNO as it stands provides the pin supplies power at five volts and LEDs will normally fail at five volts because that's too high a voltage. So what we tend to do or what we have to do is put a resistor in the, in the, the circuit and therefore I would normally expect to have to get a lot of resistors as well because every single light in your system needs a resistor so that there needs four four uh, resistors just for this one light um, let me have a look at that in a sec um, the one thing I didn't mention is a switch um, and we'll incorporate a switch into this um, system so that we can just easily switch the uh, signal to red should we want to um, sometimes people just want a red light showing rather than the green so that will provide that facility so this gives an overview of um, of what we are going to need and do when we build this system up. Here's our normal signal. This one shows a four aspect. And as I mentioned, there are four cables going to the signal, one for each lamp. Uh, and each will require a 220 ohm resistor because the Arduino provides five volts. So 220 uh, resistor, five volts will ensure that the lamps operate OK. Um, the return from the four lamps, we can do that as a common, and that goes to one of the pins on the Arduino called Ground, or GND. Override switch um, is quite simple. It just needs one pin from the Arduino, uh, and it goes back to Ground, and the Arduino can detect whether or not that switch is open or closed. Um, the detector is the last bit. Um, that needs five volt supply to power the LEDs, has a ground as well back uh, and it also needs one pin so that it can monitor whether something has been detected and tell the Arduino. So by my calculation that makes one, two, three, four, five, six. So for any one signal, um, four aspect signal, we need six pins in total. So six pins of the Arduino have been used up. Uh, there are three grounds but they can all be common so they can just go back to the single pin and we need one five volt supply again from the Arduino. So for every single we, we, we use, that's what we need. So by my calculation, I think we should be able to operate three signals from a single Arduino and they can run totally independent of each other. Okay, before we can do anything, then the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our PC so that we can um, put the program onto the Arduino. Um, I'm not going to drone on about that because there are many people who have done it far better than I could ever do it. And the one I particularly like is a series on YouTube called Fun with the Arduino. Um, it's done by uh, a Dutch guy. He's really, really good. Thoroughly recommend watching all of his videos. But for the purposes of our exercise, um, I'm going to provide a link to his very first video, maybe the the first two which you need to watch and he will explain very clearly how to set up your PC with your Arduino and then we will be ready to add our program to it. So that's what you need to do now and I'll see you when you've done that. Okay I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so by now you should have your Arduino software installed and ready to go. Um, there was one more thing I just wanted to check up while I was watching that, and that is what is the maximum current that um, an Arduino can handle. Um, it's not exactly a clear answer to that, but um, this, this is my best guess from what I've, uh, what I've just been looking at online. The Uno can handle 200 milliamps, which works out at about 10 LEDs. And I think the Nano is going to be about half that, 100 milliamps, so 5 LEDs. So if we think about our scenario here where we've got, I said earlier that we could probably have three signals per Arduino. The worst case scenario would be three showing double ambers at once, plus the current draw by the detector. Um, so I think with the Nuno, with three 
signals, we should be OK, because it's very, very unlikely you're going to have three times two, which is six, and these running at all the same time. Um, I mean, my, my signal layout is three aspect only, so I'd never get anywhere close to that. So for an Uno, I think three signals running from one Uno should be fine. From a Nano, maybe not if you're using four aspect signals. But again, with my layout, the maximum I'd ever have would be three lamps on at one time and three detectors running at the same time. So I think that'll probably be okay anyway, but we'll try it later anyway. So let's proceed as we in planned to run three signals from an Uno. I think that's probably enough for this video now. It must be getting up to about 10 minutes or so. So what I'm going to do now, is going to end this video now uh, and start part two with us loading our software onto the Arduino and getting the Arduino ready to run it. Okay, see you then.